New in Solid Edge version 20 is Structure Editor, an environment where users now have control to clone uh, assemblies that are managed by Team Center. You'll notice that the startup screen is very similar to the startup screen uh, that Solid Edge offers, where you can open documents, uh, open recently used documents, you'll have a tip of the day and the favorite links uh, areas as well. One other option, because you're working with managed data, is the capability to go into Cache Assistant and uh, work with your cache and manage that cache. So let's go ahead and get started. And what we're going to do is uh, open a, an existing assembly. And is because we're working with Team Center, you'll notice that I will need to uh, go ahead and log in. And once we uh, key in our password, the system presents us with the Open a File dialog. And of course, if you've worked with Solid Edge, this is a familiar interface already. Here we have options to search, which is what we're going to do. And I already uh, know what the item ID is, so I'm going to key that in very quickly. And it's going to present us with this motor housing assembly that we're looking for. Now you'll notice that we get the uh, preview window on the right side. And if we have custom properties set, we can look at those as well. Other options within this dialog allow us to move around the document name and revision and information that we want to view in this particular window. Other options uh, before opening is the option to open with revision rules and of course we have a full list of revision rule options that the users can use as well as variant rules. So with that let's go ahead and open up the motor housing and you'll notice that it's going to open, us, open it up in a structure editor where we have what I would refer to as the source assembly and the target assembly. So here we have a cloned assembly where both assemblies at this particular point are exactly the same. So let's talk about some of the tools that structure editor offers our users. Now notice I can scroll uh, the left side and look at the assembly and of course if I want to do an expand all. It allows me to expand and look at all of the parts and sub-assemblies that make up this motor uh, housing assembly. Another thing that we can do under the view menu is we can turn on the preview so that we can actually preview any of the information uh, that's on, uh, on in our assembly. Another option, of course, is, that's important is property information. And at any time, I can uh, turn on this property information. In this case, I'll expand it so that we can see. And in this case, it shows us the item ID, the revision, or the document name, uh, other pertinent property information. Now, as I'm scrolling and I decide to make some changes, which we'll do in a minute, you'll notice that uh, the left side is scrolling, but the right side is not. So how does the user keep up with both assemblies without getting confused? Well, we also offer what we refer to as scroll lock. So now the cloned assembly will always uh, scroll with the original assembly, so it's easier to keep track of some changes that we make. And speaking of changes, uh, well, before we do that, one other option is that we can look at this in an exploded uh, form, or we can look at it in a flat form, like a parts list form. And you'll notice here that it just flattens out the assembly for us. But we'll go back to the exploded form, and let's go ahead and start to make a change. Now, right now we have under action, we have things set uh, to no action. But if I, for example, want to copy this assembly, whether I want to copy parts of the assembly or the entire assembly, you notice in the pull down list I have uh, basically three options the no action, which is default. I have save as, so I can save this as another assembly or a new assembly, or I can simply revise the assembly that I have. Well, let's go ahead and click on the Save As, and you'll notice that the system provides me with the option to also copy all the linked documents. Well, of course, I want to do that to maintain this structure and integrity of the assembly. And immediately on the right side, you'll notice that the system automatically blanks out the revision as well as the item name, and of course, if we scroll over, the item ID. Another option is I might even want to put this Saved As assembly in a different folder. And so when I click in the folder, it automatically presents us with the, uh, the uh, Team Center folder structure. And if I just pick Motor Assembly, it's going to uh, place this new assembly in that particular uh, area or folder. Now, as I scroll down to the bottom, 
whether I'm scrolling on the right or left side when they're locked, they're both going to scroll. I can also, I can either identify one part or one assembly and right click to assign it individually, or at the bottom if I click the assign all, you'll notice that it automatically assigns uh, item IDs and item names and revisions for all of the components that we're doing the save as on. Now once we're done, uh, done with that, the next thing that we want to take a look at is maybe we want to actually revise a single part in this particular assembly. We might want to use it in both assemblies and in this case we have a pulley bracket that we actually want to make a change to. Here we've got a slot that allows us to, to uh, use larger belts on this particular uh, motor and what we want to do is actually go out and do a where use so we also offer the capability to go out and do a where used on any of the information that you're working with and here we can see that this particular pulley is only being used in this assembly so making a change to it is a safe uh, is a safe bet so under the no action option in this case instead of using the save as we'll use the revise as so we're going to revise this particular part you'll notice on the right side the part automatically gets uh, blanked out under the revision but by right mouse clicking in that particular area I can simply assign that single part and notice it automatically picks up the new revision for us so you can see here that uh, by with the scroll lock I can easily make changes on the left side of the original assembly or my source assembly and in the target or cloned assembly you'll notice that I can track those changes and make any changes that I need to before actually coming up here and performing the actions. So Structure Editor benefits our user in that it allows us to quickly reuse data or leverage our design assets. Uh, in this case we can also use virtual and real components if we if we need to and of course we can reuse portions of the assembly tree or the entire assembly tree. Now also you have options to save as selected through icons whether it's save as selected or save as all and the same options with the revise. So with the structure editor in Solid Edge version 20 we're giving our users much more power uh, working with their managed information.